Hey guys, I'm in the Sahara Desert, and I want to take a moment to say thank you to Kamikoto for sponsoring this video. Kamikoto specializes in making handcrafted Japanese steel kitchen knives using centuries-old traditional Japanese techniques. Their experienced craftsmen work only with the best materials, and that is high-quality steel sourced directly from mills in Japan. Is it worth it, and will it make me look insanely cool in front of my dinner guests? With Kamikoto knives, the answer! is always yes. Shit. Kamikoto Japanese steel knives are used by several chefs working in Michelin star restaurants. Each knife is individually inspected and packaged in a beautiful, heavy-duty ash wood box, making for a great gift for your friends and family. When I opened my box, I was drawn in by their flawless, well-crafted design. These knives are weighted, solid, and sharp. You can maintain the edges of your blades using one of Kamikoto's sharpening whetstones. Kamikoto is so confident in their knives that each one comes with a lifetime guarantee. Kamikoto is having their sale, offering our besties an extra 50 $50 off with the discount code best ever. Go to kamikoto.com slash best ever. Now, on to the show. Oh, almighty God, the Rastafari, great and terrible God, the Rastafari, the almighty God. Today, it's supposed to be about me learning more about the Rastafari people. Where are we going today? Our Caribbean culinary adventure continues here on the island of Jamaica. I gotta go two for one! <laughs> Last time, I experienced world-class street food in the nation's capital city of Kingston. That is one of the best things I've ever had. Today, I'm learning about the secret diet of Jamaica's Rastafari people. How hard is it to stick to the diet of a Rastafarian? Hidden in these mountaintops, you'll find a small, invite-only community. There's no police that goes up there. They're their own sovereignty up there, you know? I want to learn how they live. Is it a religion? Would you call it a religion? Yeah, man. And even more, how they eat. Are there certain foods you don't eat? But first, breakfast. I don't know anybody quite like me. Nobody so good at being so lazy. My man. Good morning. Good morning. We're doing it. Joining me today, young local singer and Rastafarian, Black Hero. Yeah, where are we right now? This is the famous corn shop. It's right? famous? Yeah, it's very famous because of their well-known cuisine as we're about to try and also their famous Irish moss. Irish moss. That's what we moss. call it. But it's really sea moss. Irish moss is a species of algae found all over the Atlantic Ocean. Is this something that was invented in Jamaica? No, I'm really thinking this is an African thing. Oh, I thought at least you'd say Ireland. It's commonly used as a thickener in milk products like ice cream. So chances are you've already tried it and had no idea. It's seaweed, honey, lime, and that's it. This is all natural. Let's try it out. Cheers. Nobody would guess that there's seaweed in here. It doesn't taste like anything from the sea. Exactly. Because you were expecting a salty or whatever. Yeah, like yeah, it just tastes sweet. I like it. And then here, this plate. This plate looks yeah. magnificent. This is what a pretty typical Jamaican breakfast looks like. It starts with boiled dumplings, usually made from flour, salt, baking powder, cornmeal, and water. Then, boiled bananas. I tried that yesterday. How was that experience? It was good. They just, he called it food. We don't call it banana. We don't call it yam. What we have, we call it food. Food? Yeah, just food. It's just food. Food. Yeah, it's kind of food. <laughs> That's followed by brown fish stewed with veggies and Jamaican seasonings, like scotch bonnet pepper, thyme, onions, and ketchup. Finally, a side of stir-fried vegetables. Is this salt fish or just like fresh fish? Mm, not fresh fish. It's like salted? Yeah. This is what we call a sliced fish. So it's like these massive fishes that they kind of cook down. And so this is a brown stew version of that fish. I'm not sure what's the name of this particular fish, but it's brown stewed. It's salty, it's firm. It reminds me of some countries have fish as street food and they cook it and then it just hangs out all day. And then when people are ready, they throw it on the plate. So it can be a little bit hard, but it's all right. It gives it a little bit of texture. And then this right here, these are just big, heavy, beautiful dumplings. We call them cartwheel. And they're really big, we call them cartwheel, isn't it? I love these dumplings though. They're they're like sticky and doughy. I love chewing on these. I want to ask you about you. You're a musical artist. What genre? Well, right now, 2021, music is really genreless, but I'm definitely a reggae and dancehall is the, at the core of what I do. When Donkey said the world will never me believe it. I'm what you'd call one of those crossover fusion kind of guys. Is this something that you make a living from? I know it grieves me. Definitely. Uh, that's full time. Full time? Full time. Yeah. 
Were you always Rastafarian? Nah, okay. I grew up in a Christian house. My father was a minister. So when did you convert, so to speak? It wasn't really a conversion. It was like a journey. The journey really began from church. Then you're just trying to find more purpose, more meaning to this life we live in. And Rastafari was the only thing within Jamaica that showed me. There's things that I can relate to that I couldn't have related to before in the Christian church. For many, Rastafarianism may conjure images of dreadlocks, reggae music, and marijuana. In reality, it's much more than that. It began as a black empowerment, religious, and social movement in the 1930s. Eventually, it became one of Jamaica's major religions and cultural forces. So it's a way of life. It's a way of life, really. These days, more than one million people worldwide identify as Rastafari. All right, this is a great breakfast, and I think we have a lot more to see. All right, let's go. To learn more about the Rastafari lifestyle and diet, we're heading to a place known as Bobo Hills. It's a place that just houses the original traditions of Rastafari. Tucked away in these mountains lies a commune where a small devoted population learns and worships. Are there people who live there full time? Yeah, full time. Fully full time. Yeah. But to get there, you not only need to climb this mountainside, you also must be invited in, as tourists are not welcome. This is crazy. Now what? All right, we just go. Let's go. Yeah. This is Priest Prince. He's a member of Bobo Ashanti, one of the major branches of Rastafarianism that was born in this village. Before we enter, we must say a prayer. Oh Lord God of truth, we give thanks for this day and for this visitation. Give thanks for his skillful guidance going out and coming in. Holy man, will I? Selassie, I Rastafari, blessed be Many Rastas limit their diet to what they consider pure and natural. That means no processed food, no artificial seasoning, coloring, or preservatives. There's not a lot of powders or processed seasonings. The food eaten here is grown locally or harvested straight from the source. Their diet is also free of alcohol, cigarettes, and drugs, except for one. And that one is used a lot. Sir, bless. Blessed love, my lord. Meet the village chef, Ja Wordy, an expert in Rasta cooking. Today you're the chef. Are you always the chef? Oh my, if I was a toddler. So when you were younger, did you eat meat? No. And so what we have here is basically vegetarian, right? Natural coming from the earth. Do you do any gardening here? Yeah, man. When we're ready, man, we have a kalaloo coming from here. We have a lettuce, green banana. Oh, wow. All that's here? Yeah, man. You are in Jerusalem school room, man. The Rastafarian diet is extremely healthy, as they mostly grow their own organic food. This tradition has roots in the distrust of our current, modern food system and supply chain, a system that often relies on chemicals, pesticides, preservatives, and GMOs. When you eat the natural food, you're more healthier and can stand up and go longer. When you make a baby, you make a good baby. When you eat the genetical food, the baby will become infilied because it pies in your heart or your mind. Whether these fears are justified or debatable, one thing is certain. The Rastafari diet is evidence that eating organic food doesn't have to be boring or expensive. Can you show me this one? Yeah, this is the Congo peas. Congo, like in yeah. Africa? Yes, man. Oh, these so are great. We're going to make some stew with this. So today you're going to make three different dishes. Natural. We're going to give you some stew. We're going to give you some ground provision food. And we're going to put the ackee with the vegetables. Perfect. The standards for cooking and eating here are just one facet of the Rastafari lifestyle. The faith itself is the bedrock upon which all else is built. Hear us and bless us, our Lord, keep us and sanctify us all. And cause thine holy face to shine upon us, thy children, that we shall be safe and redeemed. The Rastafari lifestyle has deep roots in Christianity. Rastafari. Their holy book, the Bible, their paradise, Africa, and their divine guiding spirit, God, also goes by a different name, Ja. ja. Their wise prophet, Hail Selassie, king of Ethiopia in the 1930s. The word Rastafarianism comes from Ras Tafari Mokanit, the pre-regnal title of His Majesty. 
The faith teaches redemption for African descendants and their repatriation to Zion or Africa. Back in the kitchen, Ja Wordy is cooking up a feast. First, boiled dumplings, different from what we've tried this morning as they're made with whole wheat flour and cornmeal. The dough is manipulated into the shape of a banana, then plopped into a pot and left to boil. In the meantime, the chef prepares ground provisions or root vegetables, dashin or taro, there's also cocoa, another kind of sweet potato, and green bananas. All these will join the dumplings. My man, dinner time. Here we go. This looks excellent. Oh my gosh. So this is a banana we had this morning. No, that's a spinach, a dumpling, but in a different form. Oh, yeah, you're right. Spinach. As I bit into it, I was like, wait, that's just dough. Mm. Yeah, it tastes like a whole wheat. Because people just use cornmeal and flour only, but they add the wheat flour. It's not that much processed. It's healthier. It's going to pass through a bit easier to your system. We're going to be pooping good tonight. If you're feeling down and for you, how hard is it to stick to the diet of a Rastafarian? There's levels to it. The real diet of a priest like Rastafarians is fasting, where they really don't eat that much. They just live off the air and water and just fruits. How many calories are in air? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it's like probably zero. All right, but for people who can't live off air, then what? The next level is then vegan. The next step would be vegetarian food, what we're eating right now. And then there's the next level where I just, some of us eat fish along with this. So oh. we don't eat any other meat, but I, I eat fish. I, I find it hard giving up the fish. But no goat, no chicken, nah. no beef? Nah. Although some Rastafarians still eat fish, for most, meat is something taboo, as it's considered dead food that will not provide your body with energy, but on the contrary, strip it away. There's a rooster down here. I love the idea of a rooster going oh. into a food hall. It takes a lot of balls, right? No, he knows he's safe here. Nobody eats him. Oh, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Wait, what's the point of having a rooster here? It's a part of the family. Next up, Congo bean stew. Remember those Congo beans soaked in coconut juice? They're simply boiled with chopped carrots, okra, and Irish potatoes. Yeah, let's try it out. Mm. Can definitely taste the coconut. Yeah, the coconut gives it some natural sweetness. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's like the secret ingredient. Like sweet. coconut milk mixed with beans. The beans are nice and starchy. There's okra in there, carrots. That's nice. Now, the star of today's table, steamed vegetables with aki. Aki is a type of fruit, a distant cousin of lychee and longan. Start by boiling the freshly picked aki. Then prepare the vegetables. So delicious vegetable. Kalaloo, cabbage, onion, tomato, pepper. Put the veggies in a separate pot and let them cook. When it's nice and soft, season with sea salt and add the boiled aki. Mix well and serve. So I had aki on my first day in Jamaica. And yeah, so is this like a similar thing but without the salt fish? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, very different from the aki I had yesterday. Much more like gentle flavors. Like I can actually it's taste the cabbage. Aki. Not super seasoned, gentle, light, and you can really just taste the vegetables themselves. In typical Jamaicans, we just add a little black pepper, all these little things to spice it up. But really, this is how it should be eaten. This is fantastic. It was a pleasure hanging out with you today, enjoying a meal with you. And just learning more about the Rastafari people, what's behind this place, this way of life, and especially the food. Delicious. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you. You guys, click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. I used to weigh 300 pounds. What? Yeah, I ate a lot of food. So how no, did you? No, no. Step one, mm -hmm. look in the mirror, okay. focus, look at your big stomach, and be absolutely disgusted with yourself. That's called motivation. And then just a bunch of hard work after that. Look at that bite I took. My dental records are imprinted in here. If I pass away after this, they're gonna be like, oh, this was definitely sunny right here. Can I ask a question? Freedom. It's gonna be a, a little bit of a strange question. No, I don't. I know there's a person here and there, they smoke ganja, yes? Yes. And so when I've done that in the past, not that I have, but I have, sometimes I get a craving and I really want to eat food. In the USA, we call it the munchies. Oh. Now, when I have the munchies, I want to eat Pop-Tarts. I understand why you wouldn't eat that, because it's garbage. Sure. Don't eat it. But no. what do you want to eat? I crave a far natural ground provision. Guys, that is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to say a huge thank you to Black Hero. That is I. Should we shake or do we do this? Oh, we can just seal it. All right, all right, let's seal it. Yeah. I had a great time. I think you're a great ambassador. I encourage you guys to go check him out. Find his YouTube, Black Hero. He's a up and coming artist. Or are you? Wait, is that bad to say? I'm up and coming, guys. I'm young. I'm hungry. Yeah. Check me out. I'm on YouTube. That's the sell. Go do it. Go do it. Guys, that's it for this one. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the show. Oh, peace. Peace.
Ja, ja. Mann. Ja, Mann. <lacht>